you know, I, I kind of, I almost blew it. In what way? As soon as I got on the set and there was all three Spider-Mans, I was like this. Ah, oh, we up in here, baby, about to go live. <laughs> God's good to see you again. How are you doing? Back Dude, at yeah. you, man. Back at you, baby. Uh, you both have experience bringing original movies to Netflix. Um, and streaming is the way that so many audience members are taking in new films. Um, Jamie, I'm curious, is opening day any different for a streaming movie versus mm -hmm. when it's going to theaters? Um, do you hear from more people who are telling you that they're checking your new movie out? It depends on how good it is. It depends on how good the trailer is. I tell them all the time. We're not in the movie business. We're in the movie trailer business. Our trailer for this for this our trailer for this movie overperformed. It did 19 million views in less than 24 hours. That's 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 pretty big when you have when you look at the the landscape of all these movies that come out. Money. And I think it's because JJ Perry, whose forte is action, and that opening scene of me pulling the shotgun and shooting the old grand like, grandmother. People are like, what is this? So it had a real wow factor. So there is a difference though. When you're trying to get people to the theater, of course, there's more elbow grease and especially coming out of a pandemic and things like this. But you'd be surprised of, you can't take the audience for granted. Mm. You can't even take an audience for granted that's sitting at home. So we want to do as much as we can to get people to hit that subscription and see something we think is just really like, uh, I think it's really amazing in, in, in first time. We dropped power on Netflix mm. around the same time this movie is, is, is dropping. Works every time. So I'm excited to be in J.J. Perry's debut movie movie and I'm also excited to be with this young man next to me who I said I'm not going to do the movie unless he's in the movie because he brings so much to it and uh, to watch his talents flourish and this has just been amazing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, don't you puke in here. I swallowed it. Uh, Dave, at one point in, in Day Shift, you refer to your characters uh, as a team as Crockin and Tubbs. And I, I'm just curious, <laughs> if you're referring to the 2006 Michael Mann masterpiece and you think Bud just looks like Jamie Foxx, the actual actor. There was there was some thought that went into that. I mean, you know, the movie the movie's a little cheeky. It kind of fits the tone of the movie for people who kind of dig deep like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the movie from the get go, it's like it doesn't take itself too seriously. It wants you to have a good time. It's it's got practical effects that are a little um, a little campy in the best way possible. It feels a little old school, a little throwback. And so I think that specific joke just tied in nicely with yeah. it all. Welcome to the day shift, motherfucker. Hi, JJ, how are you? What's up, Sean? What's up, my brother? Can you do me a favor and take me through the conversations of how you guys tried to figure out how many different ways you can behead someone? <laughs> you know, all the years of being on the road as an action director, an action guy, I pitch so many directors so many things, and a lot of them go, no, no, no. I just throw them back in my bag of tricks. <laughs> and you know, after after 32 years of having this bag of tricks, when I dumped it out on the floor, there were a lot of nuggets in there, brother. And I didn't use them all. So hang on until we get to, if we get a sequel, right. I'm gonna take you up another level. All the heads are coming off. <laughs> it's all, heads are gonna roll, baby. Does not eclipse, new moon, breaking dawn, point one. It ain't like that, all right? Why do you know the names to all the specific Twilight films? What? You do a shot in this movie that I had to go back and rewatch about a half dozen times. Um, it's in the middle of a car chase and it comes out of the sunroof of the car. Walk me through that. How did you do that? And why did you choose to do it in that moment? So I've been doing a lot of car chases in my career and the Russian arm is a pursuit or a precision vehicle that has a crane arm and a remote head on it became a, a tool in cinema in the mid 80s, I believe, or late 80s. So that changed the perspective of car chases, of vehicular chases. And it was the gold standard up until three years ago, okay. until the FPV drone hit. Nobody's quite nailed it. A Ambulance did a good job. I think we did pretty good. But what I've done now is I've been working with that drone company and his name's Tommy Tibiato. We've been r and d things. I just had him in Puerto Rico on this other second unit. I will reinvent vehicle chases with that drone when I get my next movie. It's coming. I've already r and d the shots. I can't tell you because the other action directors listening will steal it from me. But that perspective of being in the over, right. in the back seat, in an over, throwing it out and all of a sudden the whole world is, you know, you're done and then diving back in on it. That for me is, it was a game changer and you know, 
I asked the kid, Tommy, I was like, hey, Bubba, so if I was in the backseat of a car with gloves on, could I throw the drone out of the car if it checked up in a slide? And he goes, well, yeah, I think so. I said, well, let's go try it. And we tested. I have all the tests on my phone. So that's where it was born. It was you born at a Starbucks on, in Culver City talking about ideas. You know what I see when I see a van? Big old dollar sign. Jamie, you talking about bringing people back to theaters. Uh, this movie over my shoulder did just that. And we covered a lot of stories about Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire going back and seeing themselves. Did you get to go back and see No Way Home with an audience? The return of Max Dillon. Man, it was crazy. It was it was like a it was like a rock rock concert mm -hmm. uh, when we did that film. It was like, uh, I, and I thought Sony the Defense has a job of mystique. You know what I'm saying? Holding things, keeping things. You know, I, I kind of I almost blew it. In what way? As soon as I got on the set and there was all three Spider-Mans, I was like this. Ah, oh, we up in here, baby, about to go live. And somebody just dove on me like I was a fire. Like, what, the, what the hell? <laughs> no one's supposed to know. Okay, my bad. Okay, we ain't supposed to know that all three of my head. So, so, but I think that they did a great job in doing that, bringing some mystique. And I think that that's what uh, was needed to get people back uh, uh, in, in the theater. And I think that same muscle that's flexed in Spider-Man gets flexed here where you see these incredible stunts, you see this mm -hmm. incredible comedy, and you see uh, uh, incredible cats like, you know, uh, Snoop and us all in the same uh, in the same uh, situation. And so that's why we're, you know, we're, we're happy. No matter where it is, uh, we're just happy that, that, that our art is getting out there. So what's on the agenda today? My eyes are closed. Like every day. Hunting vampires. It just strikes me that because Jamie and Dave both have recent uh, uh, experience directing. So I'm curious if that meant that they were over your shoulder a ton and asking a bunch of questions or absorbing. No, so I, I, I welcome that because I feel like the more directors you have on set, especially, uh, let me rephrase it, the more good directors you have on set that care about the project, that care about every frame that you're shooting, the better. You know, so Jamie is not just an amazing talent, singer, actor, entertainer. He was also a producer on my film, and he was also a huge asset in in shooting the film and in post. And Dave too, like always coming with great ideas. And you know, I have a I have a very open forum as far as you know ideas. I I look, I don't pretend to be the smartest guy in the room. I think if you're in the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. And uh, I I always end up in the right room because I always end up somehow being the dumbest guy in the room. So <laughs> I ended up okay on that one. I can't wait to see both of you guys continue as directors. I'm really intrigued by both of your, your storytelling abilities. Jamie, when are we going to see something from All-Star Weekend? Man, it's, it's been tough. You know, with, with uh, the lay of the land when it comes to comedy, man, uh, you know, it's... we. We, we're trying. We're trying to break open those sensitive corners where people go back to laughing again, and that's why I think even in this film, uh, which is great, is like the one thing we kept hearing in the screeners was how much people were laughing. So hopefully we'll keep them laughing mm -hmm. and and run them into an uh, All Star Weekend because we were definitely going for it. God help me! Vampires just tried to kill me, and now I just pissed my favorite fucking Hey, 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 everybody pisses themselves the first time. Uh, really? Uh, did yeah. you? No, I, no, no, I didn't, but, but listen, you did. Oh. Oh.